Good morning. Welcome to Talking Church. So glad that you're with us today and joining us from wherever you're watching from. I'm joined again today by the lovely Gina and uh, we're going to be talking today a little bit about transitions and what to do and how to navigate transitions. Before we do, just want to check that everybody's doing okay. Let us know where you're watching from. Remember, if you have anything you want to ask, any comments you want to make, you can do so at hello at talking.church. So if you send us your comments and give us your hellos and let us know where you're watching from. Now, again, another great weekend. We just came through. Good to see things happening in church, things growing, coming back strong. That's always exciting. And um, yeah, here we are just about to leave June and come into July. It's amazing how time goes so quickly, eh? It really is. And also don't forget that this week is the last week for signing up for Forge Ministry School. Yeah. So if you've not yet signed up for Forge Ministry School and you just need a little bit of a shove, here's your shove today. All right. We need to hear to you, from you by Friday. And if you go to family.church forward slash forge, you can read all about it. And you can also apply. Remember, all applications need to be in by Friday. That's when registration for this year's Forge Ministry School shuts. OK, so it's an online course. It's a hybrid course. It's an in-person course. There's something for everyone. So how are you doing? What's new, Gina? Oh, nothing. Just here. <laughs> just dear, loving life and yeah. leading family and yeah, uh, doing doing life. Yeah. Cool, that's great. Right, let's talk about transition. We had a wonderful Saturday um, morning that's just gone. We pulled together um, many of our pastors from 
the family church congregations mm. and also some pastors from Great Big Life Lead, which is churches <laughs> that we walk with and run with and help to encourage. And it was just a brilliant morning mm. at our Haven campus. Yeah. Well done, Pastor Steve and the team there mm. for hosting that so well. We had two sessions and we spoke to the pastors um, about a number of things that pertain into what they do. One of the subjects that we spoke of, which people really enjoyed, was the thought of transitions, navigating transitions, because transitions are a part of life. Mm. It doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. Sometimes there's transitions because you've made mistakes, mm. but a lot of the time the transitions of life are ongoing and they're the result or they come from things growing, things getting stronger, things wanting to develop. And when you look at ministry today, the church coming out of COVID and, and different seasons, lockdown, it just seems like the ground is moving. Mm. But also within Family Church recently, we made some big transitions. Mm -hmm. um, one of the main ones being our Portsmouth congregation. We called Stuart and Carla to, to be transitioned into more of an executive role. Sean and Paula came through. We brought on some new assistant pastors. We took a new shift and position in things we're doing. Now, that's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think people are scared of transitions? Yeah, I think people don't. Uh, I think a lot of people say they don't like change because cause that's what transition is. It's change because it's different. We like what we know. And so, yeah, I think it's, it's scary for a lot of people. Now, so, some people are wired differently. I'm a lover of change. Would you be the same? Would you be less of a lover um, of change? I, I don't mind change. It's just part of life, isn't yeah. it? Maybe probably as I've gotten older, I've realized change is inevitable. It's going to happen. So you might as well just just go with it True. <laughs> because it, it's, you know, everything's changing around us. You know, we're no. all aging. Our kids are aging. We're moving on in different, in different areas. Everything's changing around us. It's uh, a moving ground, isn't yeah. it? Now in family, transitions don't ask for your permission, do they? No. It's like when, you know, men, most of you know, we've got five beautiful kids um, and we've watched them transition from having a house full, full of babies and toddlers mm -hmm. to now having, by the end of August, three of our kids in different countries, mm. two kids still at home, one at school, different picture. Mm. But actually it's okay because transition is something that you expect and it would be a problem if there wasn't mm. a transition because it would mean that they weren't aging, developing. We've got two married kids now. How funny yeah. is that? Yes. Do you ever just sit there sometimes? I do and I go... Then when did that happen? we got two <laughs> married children, yeah. Olivia and Ethan. Mm -hmm. That was a transition. It was, yeah. But a good one. Mm. Now, if you look at family, if you look at life, but also in church, in your walk with God... Transitions happen. And one of the verses that we used, which I've always loved, was a verse in Psalm 84, verse 5, where it says, blessed are those who dwell in the house. But then also then the writer of Psalms says, blessed are those who set their heart on pilgrimage mm -hmm. or journeying. You could change that, couldn't you, to set their hearts on transitions or responding to transitions. And then it says, and they will go from strength to strength. Why do you think, just bringing some of these questions on you, the transitions and setting your heart on pilgrimage or not setting up camp and not ever moving again cause you to go or cause a person to go from strength to strength, not greater strength to lesser strength, but lesser strength to greater strength. Why does pilgrimaging, celebrating transition, going with it, cause a person to go from strength to strength? Um, well, I think because as everything's changing, you have to change with it. True. You know, otherwise you become a dinosaur in a modern world. That's true. <laughs> and in a any part of your world, you become a, you know, you don't want to be stuck in the past. You don't want to be, I mean, like even just the whole idea of technology. There's so many people who are like, oh, I'm just not good at technology. I, sometimes I say, I'm, oh, I'm just not good at technology. Well, get good at technology because this is it. This is the future. Yeah. Um, you can't just fall back into, well, I just don't do that anymore. Okay. 
You might not, but you're going to miss out on so much. As a parent, you're going to miss out on so much of what your children interact with. Um, as a church, you're going to miss out on so many ways that you could get the gospel out and you could reach people that you otherwise wouldn't reach by just remaining a dinosaur in a modern world, you know? Now, we went to see, the other night, we had a date night, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yeah, encouraged date nights. We went to see a great film about dinosaurs. Yes, and we you did. all know the one <coughs> that we're talking about, you know, a, a film that involves dinosaurs. The first one came out about 30 years 30, ago. About 30 years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. And this one was really a celebration of dinosaurs. But what is it about Jurassic Park that makes people want to go to the movies? It's because dinosaurs aren't of this time. And suddenly they blend life as we know it now with dinosaurs from a time gone by. In a place where they don't belong, <coughs> really. Yeah. You know. And that's life sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But people live like dinosaurs. Yeah. When they should have, here it comes, evolved. Yes. They should have evolved <laughs> into the person or the capability of what they are today. And that's what transition does. I believe it helps you to evolve into a greater you or a next you. Yeah. Again, classic verses in the Bible, behold, I do a new thing. But mm. often when it's a new thing, it's a next thing, it's a now thing. And there has to be a response from us to say mm. yay or nay. Yes, yeah. And if we don't, we can remain a dinosaur or one day maybe get to heaven and go, man, I missed out yeah. on so much. Mm. It's true, eh? Yeah. All right. Now, when transitions take place, whether that's in our family, whether that's in church, if we use the one that happened in the Portsmouth congregation <clears throat> as, a, as, a, as a case study, suddenly everything's nice, everything's normal, we've come out of lockdown. Um, in some ways, it would be a great time to do business as usual. Mm -hmm. Yet we decided, no, we need to shake this up a little bit because we could see the growth that was coming to family church. And our current structure was good, but it could be better. So suddenly we realized there was more position for Stuart and Carla to help us with the strength of the overall executive role. And we were able to bring a young couple through, 33 years old. When you're 57, that's young. Someone's watching, like, I'm only 24, that's not young. That's young when you're 57. To bring this young couple through who are 33 years old, but we were, I was 33, you were a lot younger. Uh, when we started leading Portsmouth. And it was a transition that just felt right, was celebrated by the church. Now, whenever there's a transition, there's um, three things I said on Saturday morning to the leaders that need to be in place. Faith, courage, and wisdom. Which one stands out to you as the most significant thing within transition? Faith, courage, uh, well, or wisdom? Well, I think they're all important. Important. I, I wouldn't put one over the other, but maybe to start with faith, because, you know, as a believer, as someone who's trusting God, you're going to have to trust your unknown future mm. to God. You have to trust that that he, you know, if if you're feeling God calling you into or, or old things are falling away and, and, you know, you're faced with a future without the things that make you comfortable, your children are not around you anymore because they are out and about doing their, you know, things of their own life or maybe things that were Work are changing and they're so different now. Just your world looks different. You need faith to believe that God has something for you in mm. this next season, that he has a door for you to walk through. And uh, I mean, that's something we're believing for ourselves, but you also need courage because you need to know when the door is there to walk through it. And I guess that also it requires wisdom because, you know, you're going to know how you're going to have decisions in front of you, which, which way to go, which road to take. And that is between you and God, you know, yeah. that, that is him speaking to your heart. That's where the relationship part of the whole, um, of all of it, you know, of, yeah. of our relationship with God, you're in relationship with him and he's showing you bespoke. What is for you? What is your next? <clears throat> so true. So when there's transition, it involves faith mm -hmm. because often isn't it funny when one door shuts, another one opens? I don't and know. And sometimes the next one doesn't open right away, and you're sort of in a hallway. Well, is it, isn't, isn't <laughs> that's that, kind of how we are. Isn't at the that moment. how God's dealt with us? Yes, always. In 30 years of ministry together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very rarely can I say a, a wide door flew open, so I left the one that I was in. Yes. Most often or not, like Abraham, we heard a sound of 
this is good, mm. but you really want what I'm doing next. And there was um, a response that was needed. Yeah. But you almost step out and the door hasn't opened yet. Yeah. But the one behind you, you can hear it closing. Yeah. That's transition. Mm. Because a lot of people don't allow transition to happen because they won't walk by faith. Mm. They won't say, okay, I am going to come through this door and wait in a corridor of faith mm -hmm. for something that I really believe in my heart is happening yeah. or needs to happen mm -hmm. to happen. And, and also, uh, out of those three things that you said, which do you require more? Okay, so you're in this hallway waiting for the next door, whatever door to open, but the courage is the important thing here mm. also because sometimes God is going to put before you opportunities, things for maybe to re-educate yourself in things. Maybe there's courses God wants you to take. Um, maybe he wants you to learn more technology. Maybe he wants you to, you know, maybe little pockets of doors <laughs> are opening for you that God's putting in front of you that he wants you to get into maybe a group of certain people. And, and he wants you to get acquainted with a certain group of people that maybe you wouldn't normally to put yourself uh, in a new circle. Yeah. Maybe God is, is, is putting these things in front of you and it's going to take courage because you're going to have to say, but, but I don't think I can do that, you know, but uh, I'm not in my comfort zone here. Well, I think God is so good that along the journey, I, I really feel like he, he helps us along like a father would a child and, and in little ways gets you used to or prepared for your next yeah. in little ways. I really do. And I feel, I mean, I think maybe there's someone out there and God is calling you to uh, re-educate or, you know, Come to Forge Ministry for, School. further educate. Forge yeah, Ministry School. Who knows? That's the way and honestly, that's not a plug for Forge <laughs> Minis Ministry School, but maybe if it is yeah. for you, you know, or in some way to get, to get further education in some way for your next, because maybe God is calling you into something where you're going to need that knowledge that, you know, yeah. Classic Christian examples. The nest and the eagle getting its young chick ready to fly. Yeah. I've always known transitions to feel like the nest is being dissembled. Yeah. And that could cause insecurity. But suddenly something that was once comfortable and felt like mm -hmm. home yeah. felt like now. Suddenly mother bird is pulling out. You know, if you study the whole life cycle of an eagle... The, the, the eagle has little eaglets, I believe they're called, and they're in the nest. And then it comes to a time when the eagle, the parent eagle, says, no, these kids can't be nest bound. They need to be flying. There's a life mm. that's waiting for them that they've not experienced. Yeah. And, it, and the eagle begins to dissemble or deconstruct the nest. Mm. And so imagine if you're the eaglet sitting there and you're like, mum, dad, you are taking this nest to bits and that your current rate of doing this, I'm not going to be safe very long. Mm. But actually, then it begins to stretch its wings and comes into a dimension of living. Mm -hmm. That's a transition. Yeah. For us, we've always felt moments that heralded transition to feel like that. Suddenly things that had always felt right didn't feel quite right anymore. That led us to say, what's God doing now? Which often left us or led us into a transition. Maybe you're watching today. Hey, why don't you give us a shout on hello at talking.church. Um, you've experienced transitions. You felt God move you from one job to another. Where do transitions affect you in your life? Why don't you give us a shout out and let us know? I want to zoom in, faith and courage, on the third one, wisdom. Now, if you're going to transition successfully, some people don't uh, transition successfully, but if you're going to transition from one thing to another, from being one thing to evolving into what God wants you to be next, you need wisdom. Now, wisdom to me looks like doing something correctly. It's like if you're going to transition a department, a ministry, a church, a family, You've got to actually make sure you do it with correct timing mm -hmm. and correct people. Now, one of the things I taught on Saturday morning to the leaders was whenever you're transitioning, you should always make sure that you're building strong 
behind you. Mm. And the imagery I gave was the, a pier at a seafront. But often people see the top of a pier, let's get bigger, let's go into the ocean, let's make this the biggest pier that's ever been. Mm. But you'll never make a strong pier unless you concentrate on the the struts and the beams and the bolts underneath the pier, mm -hmm. that bit that people don't really look at. But if you're transitioning to enlarge, you have to pay attention and have wisdom to the bolts and the struts and the beams and build strong behind you. Mm. Yeah, that's wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't often go to a pier to look underneath it, do you? No, no, I, you don't. But I mean, I don't, um, I mean, I guess if, if you're talking about on a personal level, I mean, the, the wisdom and, and the struts and the peers in an individual's life, I believe in a believer is going to be just making sure they are solid in the word, solid in everything that God asks them to do. Are they being obedient to the things that God has asked them to do? Are they doing the things that are before them well? Um, you know, just even if it's not your next and you're still in sort of a hallway and maybe you're at your old job and maybe it's finishing off, you know, still do well give it your best, mm. do it as unto the Lord. Are you still doing everything as unto the Lord? Are you still having a relationship with the Lord and spending time with him? These are the little things that fine tune us, you know, obedience to God and um, uh, just just being in communication with God, prayer, um, the, the things that we consider, oh, you know, those, you know, those are the things we just know that as Christians. We know that, but are we doing that? Yeah. I, be I believe also that there's two different responses I've seen when people are transitioning um, from work, department, church, responsibility, you have one group of people that almost stop doing what they were doing. They stop turning up, they stop serving because God's doing something new. Mm. And then you've got the other type of person, which to me I believe is a more godly model, that you remain, even when you're sensing transition, things changing, God doing a new thing, mm. God doing a now thing, a next thing, you remain faithful yeah. to what's in your hand yes. until God then brings you in. Because you read the parables and the teachings of the Lord. He says that what you do, if you're faithful with little, you'll be faithful with much. Mm -hmm. I think one of the key things for transitions, and I've seen people do this in church time and time again, sometimes when God's doing something new, they just stop. They just yeah. stop doing. Drop the ball. Yeah, they've dropped the ball. Someone else uh, has to pick up all the workload. I, I don't think that's what transition looks like. I think transition can sometimes be suddenly, but often it's suddenly built on a process. Yeah. And if you're in transition um, in departments, in church, in family, one of the nuggets I would throw out to you is stay faithful to what's in your hand and what you're currently doing until God mm. brings you into the next. And that's the things that are going to, like you said, you know, bolster <clears throat> that bridge or that pier uh, from underneath. These are the things, um, the things of character. Yeah. You know, the things of character. Uh, what God is often preparing us for is not so much the, the hands-on stuff, but I believe, and I know for ourselves this has been, what he's been doing for us is fine-tuning our, our inner man, our, our character. Oh, that's good. You know, because that's what's going to, take us into the next. So you look at people like Joseph in the yeah. Bible. I mean, he started out, he was he a was lovely a young man, <laughs> but he was sharing things with people that he shouldn't necessarily have shared. Bit of an idiot. Um, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't like to, to use that word for, for, you know, didn't know. No, <laughs> um, you know, he just, he just was young, you know, yeah. slightly foolish and, uh, it got him into a lot of trouble and, and we watch his life unfold in all the different places. And what's happening is God is refining his character hmm. and just changing the man who he is for what so that he could be second in command of the whole of Egypt saving the whole of Egypt and his own people um, but it was a process you know and it was God was using his life and all the circumstances of his life and everything to fine tune him and get him to the point to be to be the man of character that he ultimately was God is obsessed with character oh yes the, the heart. Yeah. Yeah. We look at we look at the outward, the moment 
commentary, God constantly looks at the character and transition is so right. It's about character. Mm. And often when you feel an unease, when you feel a changing, when you feel the wind changing direction, often that's God working on the inside of us, Mm. challenging insecurities, challenging character, challenging fears and things that would stop us. Because it's an easy prayer to pray, Lord, wherever you send me, I give you my yes. Yes, God, wherever. But when God sometimes says, all right, well, let's do this. That's when people go, oh, I didn't mean that. (laughs) <laughs> we've got to be ready to to transition if if we say god send us wherever your will done your way it's like mm. our role in family church for the last 25 years really has been a moving role but in being a moving role we made room for others to come through mm. if we would have said no this is what we do in family church this is what we always do. We're not open to transitioning into a bigger expression. We wouldn't have the congregations we've got today by the grace of God, mm. the leaders that we've got. Mm. But in transitioning, you lift the ceiling for other people to come through. And I made a note of that. Um, but another thing to remember or lesson when we're transitioning is we're making room for other people to transition if we do it successfully. Mm -hmm. Because if one moves and doesn't drop the ball, bad transitioning, but moves correctly, then someone else steps in to their position or their role. Mm -hmm. And then behind them, someone else steps up. Behind them, someone else steps up. Behind them, someone else steps up. But when there's Mm -hmm. a good transition, it's often not about one person moving. It's a domino effect. Mm -hmm. But if if a person doesn't move, they become a blockage to actually the transition, development, Mm -hmm. evolution of others. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or, you know, when we're disobedient, it, that's just the case. Yeah. And it's funny. It's for a us, good way to look at it, too, because you don't want to be the blockage. You don't want, yeah. <laughs> so you just say, Lord, you know, what is it? You know, you know, if, if you want me to move, you've got to help me, help me to know. And, and for me. us, our role has been the most unknowing one, I think, because wherever we moved, mm. we left a job behind us. Yeah. For us, as we've led the last 25 years, it's like God continually has called us into unknowns, new new Mm. horizons. And there was always something of who we were or what we did for another person Mm -hmm. to step into. But how often have we said, well, we're not sure what ours is. But Mm. 25 years of walking with the Lord in family church, there's always been a next. Mm. But that's where faith Um, and courage come in, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But we say, come on, let's keep this thing growing. But if we keep growing, we don't cause a blockage behind us. Um, Another aspect that we picked up on Saturday morning was often when you're in transition, similar to the last point, there's other people involved. Mm. And what I've seen is often when God's doing a transition with me or with us, Suddenly, when the transition happens, you suddenly see many other storylines that are interconnected Mm. that actually it wasn't about our transition. It was about a lot of people, a lot of things. And we've got to stay committed to managing our part, what we would call our part. Mm -hmm. The two the two examples that we used on Saturday morning was um, story Genesis 22 where you've got Abraham going up a hill with Isaac to sacrifice walking in obedience not fully understanding what this was about but he didn't see the other side of the hill or the mountain the ram coming up who was another part of that storyline in when you read Acts 10 you read about Peter and Cornelius God's working with Peter in one room Cornelius in another room Mm. transitioning something that would be the saving of Gentiles Mm -hmm. yes but Peter was unaware of what God was doing with Cornelius Cornelius was unaware of what God was doing with Peter Mm -hmm. we have to trust that when we're in transition and we're walking by faith we've had wise counsel Mm. we're trusting that this is God um, stopping us from becoming a dinosaur but actually, at the same moment, if we could see with spiritual eyes, yeah. you'd probably see about three or four storylines mm. and plots yeah. all together, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So again, 
If we stay true to pilgrimage, blessed are those who set their heart on journeying with God. They go from strength to strength. We don't become a blockage for someone else. Mm. So, okay, four things to remember. Uh, I don't know if we'll get through them all, but I'm just going to throw them out today. Hope you're enjoying this. Um, God rewards faithfulness, Mm -hmm. but often the reward of faithfulness is transition. Mm. But if somebody's been faithful in doing something, God moves them out to something brand new Mm. or something fresh. And the reason they've been moved isn't because they were lazy, incompetent. It's because they were faithful Mm. with what they did. And the fruit or the prize of faithfulness can sometimes be transition. Yeah. Another one is your transition affects other people's transition. We looked at that. Um, transition secures legacy and healthy tomorrow. Again, let's use Family Church Portsmouth as an example. Um, we now have congregational pastors who are 33 years old, um, and we have executive pastors who are another generation, then there's us. What we're doing is we're securing that beyond our life, if Jesus tarries, family church will be strong and vibrant, led by people that understand the age and the culture that they're in. Hmm. Because I've seen too many churches where it almost dies when the leader dies Hmm. because they didn't raise anyone up. Hmm. And that's not what we want to do in family church. Even though movement, positioning people can make some feel uncomfortable, we've got to secure legacy and a tomorrow for what God's given us if he tarries, right? Yeah. Would you agree with that? Um, Yes, yeah, that's true. And here's a thought that people, I don't know if they liked it on, on Saturday, but I believe it fits within, no, some did. Some might not like it today. But even when we think of our life's transitioning, we have to go beyond this life. Mm. But a lot of Christians live like it all ends when they die. Mm. Actually, no, it doesn't. But I made this statement on Saturday morning to the pastors. Death is only another transition for the faithful. Mm. Now, it's a sad one for people that are left behind. But we need to understand this journey that we've got with God doesn't end at the grave Mm -hmm. that we believe we've taught before that in heaven we won't be little fat angels playing harps people will be working overseeing things having responsibilities Mm -hmm. and a lot that you do in heaven will be relative to your faithfulness would you agree with this yeah absolutely on what you did on earth Mm -hmm. no true no it's uh we're going to get rewards in heaven um based on the life we lived, you know, uh, on, on the deeds we did, you know. So if somebody just lived for themselves on this earth and said, oh, I don't care about anyone else, that's going to have an echo mm. in eternity. Yeah. But if somebody said, I'm just going to be faithful to the things that God has put in my hand, the transitions that he brings into being in this life, mm-hmm. one day when death comes, yeah. death is not my end. Because eternity now lives in my heart. Ecclesiastes says that. Mm. I'll close my eyes to this life and open them in another realm of living Mm. or eternal life. Mm -hmm. And there God's going to have stacks of things for me to do. And I'll I'll continue transitioning and walking in faithfulness Mm. in the life to come, not just this one. Mm. But I don't think there'll be a wanting to come back. Uh, No. You know, key example from a great man of God that impacted our life was Pastor Colin Urquhart. Mm. Served God 50, 60 years, transitioned, raised things up, apostolically led, had a life of handing things over. Mm. And then suddenly, like they say when people die, he stopped his training and went into his reigning. Mm -hmm. I don't believe for a moment that Pastor Colin was walking around or is walking around heaven saying, I want to go back. (laughs) <laughs> I want no. to go back. <laughs> no. But he actually would have opened his eyes to something that says, man, if I'd known this more, it yeah. would have affected the life I lived there. Yeah. Well, I, lesson, guess, so. I guess that is the ultimate transition, really. That's, you know, 
where is this, it's the end game really, which yeah. is our beginning in actuality, you know, as a as a Christian. So, yeah, it's the transition we're all transitioning to. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and it's a joyful uh, thought for believers because we have uh, an eternal hope, and it is. Um, it is a sad day for those who don't know the Lord and yet are still transitioning toward, toward that. To an eternity. Yeah. I mean, it's not just those who are saved that have an eternity. Yeah. Sometimes people can preach like it's only when you're born again you have eternity yeah. beyond the grave. Well, there are some people that do preach that. Well, everyone has an eternity. <laughs> everyone has an eternity. It's where yeah. you spend eternity, right? Yeah. That's why we've got to be preaching this good news. That, that could be a whole other show. Yeah, it could. <laughs> All right, well, I think we've done what we've got to do today. I think yeah. our work here is done today, Gina. I think so. Just want to encourage you guys that if you're experiencing transition and God's bringing new things, next things, now things, challenges, open doors before you, don't hide from them, but rather celebrate them. Get wisdom from pastors, leaders, godly voices that help you to navigate transition correctly. Also, be faithful, super faithful to what you're currently doing. Don't abandon it or drop it so that someone else has to manage it. Mm. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Anything else you want to say? No, just have a great week. All right. Well, have an amazing <laughs> week, and we'll see you back here next week for Talking Church. God bless.